Welcome back to AquaKids. We're here now with Turtwig, one of the exciting new residents of Florida Oceanographic. Turtwig is a green sea turtle, and we're going to talk to Roger and figure out Tur Turtwig's story and how you got him here. Well, he's kind of a unique case. Um, he came in just north of us at the St. Lucie Power Plant. He was pulled into their intake system, and the researchers there discovered that he had two issues. One, that he's extremely buoyant. And two, he's got an old scar across his base right here. Now the old scar is healed, and they don't know if the two are related, whether or not the buoyancy was a result of this prop scar, or the prop damage, or if it was something that was actually congenital. On further examination, they also noticed that he has very little mobility in his back legs. So this all makes him what's called a non-releasable turtle, as opposed to a releasable turtle. Any turtles that you find, you don't want to handle in case they are releasable. The less contact with humans, the better chance they have out in the wild of making it on their own. Now, once he did come into in-water research, they discovered these problems. They sent him down to the rehab center just south of us. He's been under doctor's care for the last year. And they did quite a few different types of examinations on him, MRIs, different things like that to figure out what exactly all of his problems were. And he's basically been living in a six-foot circular tank, a very, very small tank for a turtle this size. We just recently obtained a turtle permit from Florida Fish and Wildlife that's allowed us now to become kind of like an assisted living facility for non-releasable turtles. That way we can take care of them as they grow, as they mature, and, and give them a good, decent area to live out their life. <laughs> I think he likes that. That's the most movement I've seen in him all day. <laughs> <laughs> well, he had his nap, he yeah. had his earlier breakfast, so now he's ready to kind of come out and see the world. <laughs> so what kind of work do you do with turtles like this? Well, and particularly this one, since he does have a buoyancy buoyant. issue, wow. yeah, since he does have a buoyancy issue, he's required to receive meds every other day. And that's one of our biggest concerns. If we were to release him just straight out into our general population, our game fish lagoon, yeah. he could be on one side and we'd never be able to get to him to give him his meds. Right. So what we've done is we've started what's called operant training, where we're training to not only a visual target, but also an auditory target so that we can call him from a distance to a target so that we can give him his meds as he needs them. So he is going to be eventually released into the bigger lagoon? Absolutely. We're awesome. in hopes of about another week of, of training in here, which is a fairly small compact area, a lot larger than what he's been in for the last year. <laughs> yeah. A lot more scenic too. It's not just blue walls. Yeah. But Hopefully, eventually, uh, we'll be able to move him out into the Gamefish Lagoon and let him play with all of our other residents. That's awesome. Well, can we see what the training looks like? Absolutely. We have Brittany here. She's going to start the session with the clicker. She'll give Turtwig three short clicks to start the session. He picks that up. Then she'll drop the target in the water. And the idea is for him to place his nose just on the target, not bite the target, but just place his nose on the target. When he does that, she gives him a click, just a single click, to say that he's done the right maneuver. <laughs> How cool. And with that, then he gets food. Right. That's so awesome. So it's just all reinforcement training. Similar to what you do with a dog, a cat, marine mammals, anywhere in the world. And what will this training help you to do once he's in this big lagoon? It helps us to control him getting his meds. We want to give his meds on the far side of the lagoon. He may be on this side. So in order for us to bring him to the area that we want, he needs to be able to hear that clicker. The sound of the clicker will travel through the distance of the water, so he will be able to hear it. Our idea here is, is to work him on this distance and then eventually on the distance of the lagoon itself to get him to go from one location to another where we want him to be. Right, and this will also help too with measuring if you need to do or if we need to weigh him, animal. if we need to do any type of medical exams on him, it'll bring him into the area. We've also been working with a stretcher where he comes in for his target, comes right over the top of the stretcher, we'll lift him up out of the, with the stretcher, get him used to that. That way when we do have to weigh him, when we do have to do any type of exams on him, it's nothing new. This is something routine, it's something that he's always been doing. Right. Other than having a buoyancy problem, is he just as healthy as any other sea turtle? He is, except he doesn't have real use of his black back legs. Of course, yeah. 
his muscle control in his back legs, normal muscle movement is very, very smooth. Yeah. His is very exaggerated. When the boat propeller hit him across the back, it damaged his spinal cord and his spine. And by doing so, it messed up the nerves going to those legs that actually control the muscles in the legs. That's too bad. So he doesn't, he has movement in him, but he doesn't have control of the movement. So what are green turtle status in the wild? They are on the federally endangered species list. So that means that too bad. they're not completely out of being able to repopulate, but they are very much endangered. Uh, their numbers have dwindled quite a bit from similar accidents to what he's been through, from boat damage, different predation, people overseas and, and foreign countries that actually still make turtle soup out of these guys. So what can people do? People can contribute to organizations that support turtles. Uh, here in Florida, we have turtle license plates. Mm -hmm. It's one of the greatest things great out one. there. What yeah. a great way to fund the research that goes on with these guys. Absolutely. And I guess kids at home, if they don't live in Florida and can't get Florida license plates or aren't 16 and can purchase them, they could have fundraisers and things like that. They could there's have there's penny fundraisers. Drives. There's a lot of groups out there that really want to help the turtles. And they're all over the world. Help with any one of them. Mm -hmm. Contribute to them. Right. Because they're funding the research that will go into making sure that these guys are taken care of, the non-releasables, making sure that the ones that are only slightly damaged actually get released. Ones who have other injuries or something like that, similar problems, they get the medical care that they need. Yeah, well you guys are doing great work here. We really appreciate it. Oh, we yeah. hope you get them in there soon. <laughs> Coming up next, the kids plunge in with nurse sharks, lobsters, and stingrays. I'll be back. Hey, me too. Yeah, I guess so.